In today's video, you'll be making a movie title sequence using nothing but After Effects. Let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Nick here again from Grayscale Gorilla with another After Effects tutorial. Now today we'll be making an animated movie title sequence based on the Pixar movie, The Incredibles. Now all you'll need today is After Effects to pull off this look, but if you want the scene file from today's tutorial, you can download it over at our website. We'll link it up down below here on YouTube as well. All right, with that, let's open up After Effects and let's get started. Okay, here we are in After Effects and let's first get our composition set up and then we'll quickly build out this 3D type. Now you can start a new composition down here with this button or if you see this button here, you can just click new composition. Now I'm gonna use a 1920, uh, not by 1080. This is a traditional 16 by nine um, scene, but uh, instead what we're gonna do is something a little bit more narrow, a little bit more cinematic. I'm gonna choose 800 and you'll see we get a much wider screen here. It's gonna make it much more like going to the movies, right? Okay, so now if you want to follow along and use this with your logo or do uh, anything with just regular type, you don't have to use Illustrator. You could just come up in here to your uh, text tool and type in your name. And uh, I'm just gonna scale this down by coming over here. And you can follow along with, the, with your text or your logo or whatever you wanna do. But if you want it to look like this, right? Here's the example. Here's the little curve that we have on our text. We're going to have to jump into Illustrator for just a second, just to get this nice curve. And then I promise we'll be back right out here to After Effects. So to get this curve on your name or your logo, whatever you want, come on into Illustrator and uh, create a new document. And uh, the defaults are usually okay. Uh, Illustrator scales infinitely, so you don't have to worry too much about the size. So I'm just going to hit create and we're going to quickly get through this because I'm no expert in Illustrator, but sometimes you need to jump in to get assets for After Effects. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab our text tool. I'm gonna go ahead and click, and uh, I'm gonna type in uh, the uh, incrementals. Okay, this is our nice little uh, fake text there. Uh, we could scale this up, or we could use our character uh, tab. If you don't see that, you can go to Window and uh, go to um, the uh, text tools, which are down here, type character. And you can uh, scale up the type if you want here. You could also drag, shift, drag it to make it larger. Now for this uh, specific logo, I used uh, the knockout typeface. Knockout is great because it has all these nice, you know, chunky text and all, you know, thicknesses. And I, I think the one I used was, uh, let's go, I think it's this one right here, flyweight. Um, so this allowed it to be nice and narrow, but, but still have these nice tall letters. I also uh, spaced it out a bit. So you wanna make sure you have a little bit of room to space out your logo, maybe not that much. Let's scale it up, grab the corner. I'm holding shift to scale that up. And we have our basic logo. And to get that curve, uh, while you're in your, uh, while you have your text selected, you're gonna see a bunch of these options up top here, including text options. And this is the one right here. Uh, that says it's called make envelope, but if you just click it, it's gonna go to your warp options. Now, uh, there's tons of different warp options. You can uh, you know, make it look like a flag and all this great stuff and feel free to experiment. The one that we're gonna use is called arc upper. And uh, I think the default is looks more like this. So all you have to do is dial this in. You don't want it too crazy. You don't want it too squished, right? So somewhere around here looks fine, uh, you know, 11, 10%, little goes a long way here with this squish. If you overdo it, it won't be readable. But something like that looks good. Let's hit okay. And the last thing we need to do is make this uh, type all uh, white before we bring it in and you'll see why in a second. So let's just go ahead and select uh, the type here and um, we can double click to select the type as type and not just as an object. And once we do that, we can come up into this uh, area right here and go ahead and click on the color and go to white. Okay, here's the good news. We are done in Illustrator. Save this thing. Don't forget, I'm gonna save it out to our desktop and call it um, logo tutorial uh, increment, okay? And we're gonna save that. Uh, Illustrator CC is fine. 
Uh, and here's the good news. I always love when we leave Illustrator. I'm, I'm, I am no good in Illustrator, as you can see. But now we get to replace this um, you know, regular type with something a little bit more unique. So let's go ahead and double click in our uh, project window to import that logo we just made. And uh, we can bring this in right here. And we're gonna click open. And I'm just gonna drag it into our existing scene. Now you can see it's a lot smaller. I'm gonna delete this your name thing. And again, if you just wanna follow along with text, you could do that. Uh, almost everything from now on will uh, work the same if you just type some text in. Okay, so um, let's scale it up. I'm gonna hit S for scale and scale this up in our scene. Just kind of reposition it. You can see it's a little low quality. Uh, with vector graphics though, we have this nice button in After Effects right here. And if you click this little star, it's gonna uh, re-rasterize this object um, forever. Like you could really scale it up and it just stays in perfect um, you know, sharpness. So now that our logo is the size we want it, let's make it 3D and let's start to extrude it. Well, the first thing we wanna make sure is we have the correct 3D renderer turned on. Now, I want you to come up to your composition, go to Composition Settings, go to 3D Renderer, and this is what I'm talking about right here, Renderer. Now there's the classic default uh, renderer, which is uh, totally fine for so many things. I still use this a ton. And then there's the uh, old kind of 3D version, which is ray traced. I would not recommend using this. It's pretty slow. Instead, I want you to use the new Cinema 4D renderer. Now, if you're familiar with Cinema 4D, we're not gonna be using Cinema 4D at all in this tutorial. We're not gonna be opening it. We're just using it as a renderer. And while we're here, let's go into our options and let's set our renderer options really low. This will allow our 3D channels to render very fast while we're lighting and texturing. And then later on, when we get ready to render, we could turn this up and get a much higher quality 3D render. But for now, let's just go way low, something like four, you can even set it to zero, and then click OK. OK, so let's make this text 3D. Well, the first thing we need to do is turn this uh, Illustrator object into shape layers inside of After Effects. The easiest way to do that is to right click or control click on this layer and go to create shapes from vector layer. Now automatically uh, After Effects will turn off your original uh, comp and or uh, off your original layer and make individual shapes for each one of these letters. And in fact, um, if you wanna make alterations or anything to your logo, you could do it here as well. Now let's make it 3D. Well, the first thing we need to do is come over here and turn it on the 3D mode. This originally will just tell After Effects that you want this layer to be 3D. And I'm just gonna hit W for rotate and rotate around and show you that while our logo is now 3D and we could rotate around it, it has no thickness to it. It's not like a chunky 3D logo, okay? So how do we get that? Well, there's just one more step. I'm gonna undo all that and hit AA on my keyboard. Now just hit A twice. And what that's gonna do is on any 3D layer, it's gonna open up only the 3D options. Now in this case, we have the one that we want, which is extrude depth, okay? Extrude depth allows us to make that chunky 3D look. And as we turn it up, you'll see it's pushing geometry into Z space. And we don't need a ton of geometry. We just, maybe 25 is fine for us now. And you can see now we have this chunky logo. Well. Good news is we have some 3D type. Bad news is it does not look great. Well, there's no shadows, there's no textures, there's no lighting, there's nothing that makes 3D actually look good. And I say this in a lot of videos, but lighting and texturing um, are always what help turn you know regular old 3D into 3D that looks more um, lifelike, it looks more appealing, and you're gonna see most of what we're doing from now on is, is adding our textures and our lighting to our scene. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna concentrate on is the lighting of our logo. Right now we just have this plain white logo. And I, what I want is that nice red logo. I want some nice highlights on the side. And rather than try to texture my logo, I'm gonna use lights to uh, light it the way I want instead. So let's go up to our layer, new light. There we go. And let's make a new spotlight. Now your default might be uh, white. I want you to go to like a darkish red, okay? Not all the way saturated, but pull it back a little bit, a little bit darker. And um, I want you to make sure that your intensity is at 100. 
I want you to turn up your cone angle uh, to somewhere around 120, 130. This is gonna make our cone a little bit larger to catch more of the geometry. And uh, you want cast shadows turned on and everything else is fine, set to default. Hit okay. And now we're talking. Now we have a cool red logo. Now, um, while we're here, let's make our logo much more beautiful and catch better light. And the way that we do that is to select the logo, hit AA again, we're gonna be using that keyboard shortcut a lot, AA to open up your 3D layers. And in this case, I want you to go to your bevel style and go to convex. And now this will add bevels to your type. I'm gonna shrink it way down, bevel depth one, but now you're gonna see we have these nice little highlight details on the edges of our type. And as we start to animate our camera and add other lights, this is gonna help pop that logo out a little bit more and, and it just adds some interest. Okay, so let's now uh, add a, a a side light to get the side of the, the, the letters a little bit, give them a little bit more uh, to look at. So let's go ahead and just duplicate our light, Command D, and uh, let's name our lights as well. We have a front light, and uh, this second one is gonna be called uh, right light. And let's hit P for position. And then we're gonna use these sliders to move our light around our object. Now don't, don't grab it and move it because this will move its um, kind of orientation point. If you just leave it alone and use these sliders, it's gonna rotate around our object. So we want it to go way right. And then in Z, we want it to go back past zero, back to the back. And so now this light is lighting the, the sides of these letters over here. And we can also duplicate this again, bam, hit P for position, go to our X and go all the way over to the other side. You can hold down shift while you're dragging to speed that up. And so now we have lights on the side, lights in the front. Now let's dim these lights down a bit. They don't have to be that bright. Let's go ahead and hit AA and our intensity, while both of them are selected, we could just dim it down. So now we have a little bit of lighting on the side and uh, we could even change the color of it to be a little bit brighter. Maybe a little bit more orange and a little bit more bright. And this will add just a little bit of variation to our logo. Let's add one more light for the top. In fact, um, let's go ahead and lower our logo so that we could see the top of our logo. And I'll show you why uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see it'll add a little bit more detail to the depth if we could see over the top of our logo. So how do we do that? Well, let's grab, um, you know what? Actually, let's just lower the logo. This will be great. Now, uh, here's a trick we're gonna use a lot too. We're gonna select all of our layers by selecting one of our layers, hitting Command A, and then twirling up on that little triangle. It's just gonna clean up all of our settings and kind of go back to normal in our um, in our timeline. Now from here, we're going to lower the logo. Let's go to our logo. Let's uh, hit V on our keyboard. This will bring up our pen here, or not the pen, but the little arrow. And we can grab our position and just move the logo down. And now we can start to see over the top of our logo. Now uh, we need a light up there to see the detail. So let's go ahead and make it. Let's take the front light, duplicate it, call this the top light and hit P for position. We're gonna go up, uh, no, that's left and right. We're gonna go up on Y, and then we're gonna set this back to zero so that it's on top of our logo. And then in fact, we can go left and right a little bit more just to center it, and maybe go a little bit further back just so it's definitely hitting the top. Okay, so what's cool about this is if we hit AA, we can make this a much brighter light, something like a bright, yellow, and this will start to light the top of our, our letters and give that even some detail, okay? And maybe you don't need as much of it. You could dim it down a little bit, but you could see um, all these extra lights with different colors are starting to add little details and little hints of um, lighting to our logo. Now, while we're here, let's also go to our logo, hit AA, and turn on Cast Shadows. Okay, you're gonna see that uh, added a lot of little shadows inside of our logo. You can see our H has some shadows. And what I would say is, depending on the look you're going for, now we're obviously doing this incredible style look, I'm gonna turn this off. Um, 
I'm going to set it to off because I want this to be a much more kind of old school 3D bright lights. And so if yours is a little bit more moody or less bright colors, you may want to have shadows on. I just wanted to show you where that was. Okay, we will tweak the lights as we go because this is all a little bit too bright for me. In fact, I'm going to hit AA on my front light and just tone that down a little bit. But as we start to do compositing, you'll see that we could tweak all this quite a lot. Um, and before we go, I just want to name this one left light. I want to select right and left light, hit AA. And I'm going to make these a little bit more, more red and less bright. Okay. Now, uh, let's go ahead and set up our camera animation. I think we're ready. Now, rather than turn our uh, camera and try to like rotate our camera around just perfectly, we're gonna instead use a null to animate our camera. And if you haven't done this before, it's a pretty cool trick. I use it all the time. I want you to go into your um, uh, new settings here, layer new, go to camera, and uh, go ahead and just set up like a 30 millimeter, maybe like 25 millimeter lens for your camera and click OK, bam. Okay, so now we have, you can see our text kind of extruded a little bit more. We could adjust that. Um, but now we have a camera that is roughly where we want it to be in its final pose. And um, so how do we animate it? How do we rotate it around our scene? Well, this is where we go to our layer, go to new, go to null. Now you wanna make your null 3D. And all a null is, is just a little empty object in the middle of your scene. And once it's 3D, you can attach a camera to it. And then instead of animating your camera, you're gonna animate the null instead. It's gonna be a much smoother rotation animation. So let me show you how easy this is. In your camera, you're gonna want to parent your camera to the null. Now, if you don't see these parent options, you could right click up here, go to columns and turn on parent. But right here, they call this a pick whip. You could grab it and just, you wanna click it and stay held on it and drag it onto the null. Now, once you have that, you can now animate your null in the rotation and your camera will follow along. So for example, in our X rotation, we can animate that and our uh, camera will fling around. Or what we really wanna do is animate our um, Y rotation. <laughs> So let's get, do that. Let's set a keyframe for 90 degrees because it'll start way over here. And to set a keyframe, we're gonna come over to the stopwatch and set a keyframe for 90. And then over the course of maybe like two seconds, we're gonna go to zero, okay? And this is our basic camera rotation. Okay, so now we also have the ability to um, animate the position of our null so that it is uh, so that our text is higher. Now we want it to end with the text lower because we wanna see over the top of our logo. This is a really key part of this effect, but we don't want it to start there. We want this T to kind of fill the scene. So how do we do that? Well, let's also set a position keyframe. I'm gonna hit P for position. Let's go out to two seconds and, and make sure our end keyframe is set because that's definitely where we want it to end. But then let's go up and set our Y to go up a little bit and that'll be the, the, the start of it. And we can even um, take our camera and zoom in a little bit just to get a little closer to our scene. So if you haven't played with the camera uh, tools, you wanna make sure your camera is, is uh, selected and you, you hit C on your keyboard. And this is gonna allow you to cycle through these camera tools. Now the one we want is this one right here, it's called zoom. It's gonna allow us to zoom in a little bit, kind of take over the frame. And, uh, and then it'll allow us to go all the way back out here, bam, to our final look. And so now um, we, can, we can see our animation. Okay, so let's go back. Looking good. We're gonna fix that the, the way that it goes down in, in, in another composition, but that is gonna be part of the look here. So we have our fling, swing, okay. So now that we have this set up, let's ease in our camera. Um, right now we just have this really linear camera move. So let's really quickly select our final keyframe of our uh, rotation and our position. So I'm gonna select our null, I'm gonna hit U, U. Instead of AA, you hit U twice. 
and you select the end keyframes and you jump into the graph editor. Now the graph editor, uh, we could get into more detail in other videos, but I'm gonna show you enough here where you can start to get a little bit more control in After Effects. And so right now you can see we just have this linear move from here to here, boom. And this is a very boring camera move. In fact, uh, if we set our resolution to half and we hit shift zero on our keyboard, um, you can you can see that it's gonna render this through. And the, the animation quality is just like really kinda, you know, Ugh. like blah. there's nothing interesting going on with that camera move. However, if you instead take these flat keyframes, now that they're both selected, and I'm gonna make them go all the way down um, to, uh, to zero. In fact, the second one, I'm gonna select separately and go the other way. I'm holding shift, by the way, and just, so what shift does is it snaps it to zero, and now your keyframes should look like this. So now what we have is a very fast start and then it eases into its final resting place. Boom. Much more interesting, much more fun. This is the way we need to do this, okay? So now that we have a rough idea of what our camera animation looks like, we have our basic lighting. Let's head on in to, uh, um, into another composition and start to talk about the back uh, and, and the comp compositing, and we're gonna jump between this, um, but we're gonna make a new composition. And so here's here's my general workflow when it comes to 3D in in After Effects. You build your 3D with your your basic camera move, your, your textures, your lights, um, in one composition. And so here we go, we got that. And we can come back and visit it, but what we really want to do is drop this composition into a new composition so that we can then add things like light um, uh, compositing, we could add the background, we could add glows, we could add the, the all the other stuff that is a part of this animation we could add in a separate comp. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, our 3D animation doesn't have to re-render every time because it's kind of baked in this original comp. And two, it cleans up this timeline so we don't have to worry about our lights and our compositing at the same time. So how do you do that? All you do is you take your or this comp that you're working in and drag it into another one and it'll make a new one. Uh, not sure why that didn't work, but there we go. Drag that one in, boom, here's your new fresh comp. Now this, this comp looks identical. In fact, if we go to the end here, we hit N on your keyboard, N for Nick, and then you hit zero or hit the space bar. Uh, it's gonna start to animate the scene and you can see it's identical. It's just all wrapped up in this composition. But here's the key. Now we're able to build our glows and all this stuff. So let's go to layer new solid. Let's make a black background. And you wanna make sure it's comp size and you wanna put it below the original 3D logo. Now in this one, we're gonna go over to our effects and presets. Again, you can go up to your window if you don't see where this is and type in ramp. Now, we, we want a gradient ramp, we want a radial ramp, okay? And then we want the center point of the radial ramp to be a really dark red. And then we want the um, uh, outside of it to be black. I actually got this reversed. You want this one to be dark, dark red. And you want the end color to be black. Aha, and then you can move these around and start to build what your scene looks like. Now here's the little red, red ramp glow. And we could also move our logo up in our scene so it's centered, so that's good, okay? And um, we actually want a little bit more detail on this logo. Um, and we could, we'll could we'll figure that out in a second. We'll add, I'll show you how to change that. So now we have this scene and we can start to add all the glows and all the lighting tricks and everything. So um, how do we start to do that? Well, now that we have our general background, let's set up our final look. Our final uh, part of, of the logo where it's all readable, it's all beautiful, and, um, and, and kind of work from there, right? That's how I tend to work. I, I, I go to the most important part of the logo and make sure that that looks the best. And then I animate in and out of it, okay? Because we really want where that logo sticks 
to, to really be important feeling. And we wanna make sure that is right. And then we can move in and out of it as we want. Okay, so we're going back to the lighting comp. Um, the top light, I'm gonna hit AA and reduce that top light down quite a lot. Um, and we're gonna do a, uh, we're also gonna go to our side lights and tone those down, AA. And we're gonna animate these over time. But for now, wanna wanna tone them down. And let's let's talk about how our lighting works. What we really want this logo to do is start off red in the front and then turn into a silhouetted looking logo. And so how do we do that? Let's go to our uh, front light. Let's hit AA and our intensity, uh, let's just start it at, uh, let's, let's click this button here to get out of our graph editor. We're gonna use it again later, but let's click it to go back to our regular timeline. I'm gonna set a keyframe for intensity by clicking on the stopwatch. I'm gonna go forward in time. And right about by here, I want our intensity to be either zero or almost zero, not negative, but let's go to like 15. So this looks a little bad <laughs> in this scene, but as soon as we go into our new comp, you're gonna see what we're really building is this, this silhouetted look. And already we're seeing like this color is way too, uh, way too green or bright, like something's wrong with that color. So. Let's um, let's remove our top light for now. And, and I think what we really need to do is turn on shadows for certain lights and turn them off for other ones, okay? But for now, uh, what, we, what we're gonna do is just turn off our top light and that is looking much better. We do need some top light to set it on our scene though. So how do we do that? Well, um, we're gonna go back into our logo, hit AA and go down to our cast shadows and turn that on. Okay, A number one, we're turning cast shadows on. This is gonna add a little, lot more detail to these side lights, but it kind of messes up our top light look. Okay, let's go to our top light, hit AA, and then we're just gonna reverse it and say cast shadows off. Okay, so this is gonna add all this nice detail, and then now this is gonna allow us to turn on and off these, these lights as we want. So we have our nice top light, Let's see what that looks like in the comp. Not bad, okay? But we need way more red light on the sides and all around the whole object. So let's go to our right light, AA, intensity. Whoops, AA. Now these lights cast shadows off. That's what we're missing, okay? I'm gonna darken this up. Darken that up. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So now we have these nice little lights on the side. We have our front uh, silhouette that's starting to appear. We're just missing that right, uh, or this left light, I should say. Hit AA, turn cast shadows off. Also darkening that light a little bit. Remember, we're painting our logo with lights. I'm gonna turn up our intensity just a bit. And I think we're gonna animate that as well, okay? So we're starting to get a much better looking logo here. I think it needs to be up a little bit higher. Something like that. Okay, so let's uh, stop messing with the lights for now. We do have our rough rotation and we can start to play around with our, you know, our background glows, how all this stuff comes in and out of the scene. And then we're gonna work on uh, how the logo moves out of the scene as well. So let's go ahead and do that, layer, new, solid, and in this case, we're gonna pick something um, a little bit brighter, more like an orange, and I'm, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna grab a mask, go to your ellipse tool and your masks here, and just draw a little little glow back there. I'm gonna set it something like this. If you're off center, you could hit space bar. This, you, this allows you to move it around your scene, and then place it, and just let it go. I'm gonna hit F for feather. I'm gonna I'm gonna make our little glow here and then put it behind our logo. Okay. Now what's great about this is it's starting to influence the look of this um, logo just from um, just from having it making it look like it's backlit. That's really the effect we're going for. We're going for this logo is coming in. It's generally lit. 
and then all of a sudden it's backlit. So how do we do that? Well, we animate this transparency of our rear logo here, okay? Or not the logo, but the glow. So let's set opacity to 100. We want that to be its eventual opacity. And we want it, we don't really want it to show up until like right around here. In fact, we want the back to be the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate our background. I'm gonna delete our gradient ramp on our rear one, because this is just black now. We have our red glow, which we're also gonna animate, transparency, hit T for transparency, animate the, from um, uh, zero all the way up to uh, 100, and then, our, and then our orange glow comes in as well. So let's go ahead and do a, a RAM preview of what this looks like. I'm gonna hit space bar, or you can also hit zero on your number pad and roughly see what we're looking at here as far as your logo. So you can see it rotates around and then our glows are, are coming up and our glows are coming up just as our, um, just as our front light goes down to show up a little bit more of that um, rear lighting. Okay, we got some work to do, but we're getting a general sense of how this all comes together. We're also gonna animate the other lights. So let's go ahead and animate our left and right light. Um, I still think our color might be off. I'm gonna go back to a more of a regular red on these. And uh, you know, you may say, Nick, why don't you just pick the, for the right color first? You know, if you just pick the right color the first time, you won't have to mess with it. Well, this is part of the process, right? You're you're dialing things in up and down and you're you're seeing it in context and you're realizing, you know, I gotta just dim this down or make these little tweaks. And these little tweaks are what um, what what help sell that final animation. Now, you can see, now we have just this bright highlight and, and the rest of the logo looks a little bit more normal. Boom, bam, getting there. Let's brighten up our top. All right, we're getting we're getting in the fun part here. You know, we could brighten up our top logo. Maybe maybe that color was a little bit too harsh as well. Maybe we don't bring that more down to an orange, looking good, and uh, brighten our intensity up. And 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 also don't forget we can animate that intensity. Okay, so let's go ahead and set a keyframe for that, and say I don't want that top lighting to start happening until here, or maybe it's really dim. And then, it, and then it comes up over time. Okay, so what we're really doing is we're timing our lighting with our compositing. And what this is allows us to do is make our logo look like it's really in the scene, okay? So now um, we, could, we could do the same. So we have our front light, bam, bam, see what's going on. Let's go to our comp and uh, let's go, we are at half res. I'm gonna hit shift zero on my key, uh, keypad. This is gonna give us a um, every other frame render and just allow us to see it um, a little bit quicker. And now, man, we're getting somewhere. Boom. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now, here's what we're missing now. We have our general feeling of all this, okay? Now what we need to build is the glow part of the ending. So this this is good. It's a, we need a little bit more readability here. I think we got to go a little bit either wider with this with this feather or you know start to start to build a little bit more um, detail here. But we're getting there, right? You're starting to see it come together. So let's let's do this. Let's start working on um, let's do two things. Let's take our uh, ramp and add a little bit of red in the sides of our ramp, just so it doesn't go all the way to pure black. I think it'll help us make the logo a little bit more readable. You can go subtle with this. You don't go like that, that's too bright. You just dial it down, bam. Okay, and then I think we could also look at our, our the side of our logo here and say, okay, I think it's a little too thick, first of all. I think the thickness of our logo is making it a little bit unreadable. Uh, so we can change that and then I think we're gonna also dim these side lights down as well. So again, we're jumping all around because that's how that's how production works, right? <laughs> it's never a straight line from uh, exactly what you see in your head to what it is. I'm just I'm just turning the, the the brightness of these side lights down because I think it'll make it more readable. Yep. And then I'm gonna um, 
I'm going to uh, reduce the thickness of our logo. Again, highlighting it all and then twirling them all up. Going to our original logo, hit AA. And I'm gonna turn our extrusion depth down to like 18. What I really want it to be is so that it doesn't it doesn't cover up each individual letter. Maybe even less. 15? Okay, let's take a look. This is our very important final frame. So we're really, really over critiquing this one. I think our top light has to be brighter. Remember, we have it animated, so let's go to our top light, hit AA, and we have keyframes now to worry about. So let's go to our keyframe. Make sure you're over the keyframe before you brighten it, okay? Or else it won't stick, okay? So now we have this nice little highlight across the top. That's pretty cool. Let's hit P for position and make it go way higher, way higher. Boom, now we're catching a little bit more edge. It's sinking into the top there a little bit. Yeah, that's looking that's looking better. Let's also go to our right and left light. Hit AA, and and uh, maybe I was I was wrong. Maybe we gotta increase the intensity. Let's go back to our comp and boom, ooh, ooh, baby. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, right? Did you see how much different that that make the the depth of our letters? I shortened it. We added different lighting, and and it's all this tweaking. And so now we're we're looking like we're at our final. This is kind of our lockdown of our logo, okay? Um, so now let's finish our camera animation. Let's do the zoom in part of it at the end and start working on the very end of it. So let's extend our timeline a little bit. I'm gonna take our camera um, and I'm going to, um, how are we gonna do this? Let's let's just look at, at the keyframes that we have. Right now all we have are these rotation keyframes on our null. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay. What we're gonna do instead is animate our camera. So let's hit P for position on our camera and let's animate the zoom out effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and set a keyframe for position. Let's go to, to um, let's open up our null. I'm gonna hit U to show all keyframes on our null. We're gonna go to two seconds here and then I'm gonna say, okay, our position on our, on our camera, it's it, what we want is it to kind of float out. We want it to back up a little bit before it zooms in. So over time, I'm just gonna keyframe our camera position to go back like that, okay? And, and, and extend it, okay? Maybe to like, you know, three seconds. So now what do we have? We have our logo, we have our, our camera that's kind of zooming back. And you'll see that this creates this little bit of drifting motion on your logo. Just that little bit of drift. Okay, so now let's see what that looks like. Boom. Drift, 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 drift. And what we really want it to do is drift back and then slow down and then slam toward the camera really fast. So how do we do that effect? Well, let's set all the keyframes. The timing is feeling good. Let's go to like four seconds or just after and do the slam in. Let's go to our position and animate it like, like we're flying way into this logo. I'm even gonna dip down a little bit on our um, uh, on our X. Oh, I see, because we're tied to our null, I think this, this will be fine. We can kind of like jam into it this way, but it shouldn't mess with too much. Let's do that. Okay, so now what we have is our zoom in boom, flies right in over it, okay? So, uh, bad news is when we hit render, when we shift render this, th that slam in is gonna look too aggressive and it doesn't slow down, it's just, it's too jittery. And the reason is we don't have smooth keyframes on our camera. What we have are just linear keyframes. You can see the difference between linear keyframes right here. Linear keyframes are have these little uh, triangles, diamonds, and then the smoothed out keyframes have these nice little rounded edges. And you, you're gonna see it just kinda, it, it jitters, it slams in, it, it's not quite what we want. Well, the first thing we wanna do is select all those keyframes, right click on them, go to Keyframe Assistant, uh, and go, oh, I'm sorry, go to um, uh, Keyframe Interpolation and set Spatial Interpolation to Linear. Okay, and um, this fixes that wobbly keyframe issue that we have. 
And so uh, if you ever get like, little weird wobbly keyframes that aren't doing what you want, always set that to linear. The next thing we're gonna do is go into our timeline, into our graph editor, and smooth all this out. So let's talk about the first move right here. Let's just select it. And we want this to, you know, it's a subtle move, but we want it to slow down over time. So now uh, the speed of that first move is kind of getting slower and slower. And then the second move kind of ramps up over time. And so we'll have other videos about the graph editor and, and, and exactly, you know, how this stuff works. But what you want it to do is look smooth. Uh, what, what's happening is the, the, it's, it's slowing down and you can see it almost stops. The logo is almost at a standstill and then it starts to ramp back up toward the camera and, and gain speed. And so when we do this um, test render, you're gonna see it's, uh, it's a lot more of a realistic camera move to kind of slam in. So let's uh, wait for it. Renders pretty quickly. We're still at half resolution. But with all the lights and everything happening, it's, it's not so bad. Here comes the move. Remember, at this keyframe, it's slamming forward. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna read the logo. You're looking for readability here. You're saying, is this enough time for the audience to like have a moment to read all this? Feeling good? You could do a little sound effect. Something like that. Let's see what this looks like in our uh, more of our final scene. Looking good. And then it does the zoom in. Bam. Okay. So now we have that. It's, it's zooming back. It stops and it slams. Okay. Now you're seeing what, what, what happened there. You see where it's cut off? Our logo is cut off because uh, we took that original comp and moved it up. Remember that? So how do we fix that? This happens to me all the time. Like we, I, I use this final comp to kind of fix something and then I'm, I'm like, oh no, when I zoomed in, it get all, got all cropped off. Well, how do we fix that? Let's go to, back to our original comp, go to our composition settings, and just turn up our height. Like we can go overboard. Bang. So now we have plenty of this height to deal with. We can go back to our comp and we can realize not only do we have all this extra space, but um, we could even zoom in further if we want uh, down the road, okay? So there it goes. Bam. Okay. So again, we can always tweak, we can always play, but um, let's start to get into this final glow section and start to add that final compositing to really, you know, like it, make the, make that final pop feel that much more, um, well, let's just say what it is. It's incredible, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, let's go and make, what do we make next? Let's add a little bit of compositing to the front of our layer because I think it needs it. It's a little bit dry feeling. It's a little bit too clean in this room. And with all these light effects happening, we're gonna need some, some good old fashioned like glowy stuff. So let's go to new solid. Let's pick something that's a little bit bright, maybe a little orange and, uh, and make it comp size. We're gonna do something similar to what we did to the glow behind it, but we're gonna grab the, our mask. We're gonna make a circle. I'm holding shift to make sure we can move it around. I'm gonna hit F for feather. I'm gonna feather it and now this is starting to interact with the with our logo in the front of our logo. I wanna tone it way down. 20, 30% that goes a long way in these modes, but now you can see we're starting to get a little bit more, um, just like a little bit more dust in the room with just that little bit of mood. Check this out, really simple, but bang, bang. Okay, let's work on the glow in the background. Let's go to uh, layer, uh, new, and Let's go to, yeah, let's go to solid. Let's make this almost white, like a little bit of an amber. And uh, we'll just start with that. And here's what we're gonna make. We're gonna make little light rays, like little glowy Futurama light rays coming out of the center of this composition, okay? And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna animate a circle. And so let's just solo this layer so we're just working with that. And I'm gonna take our little mask here and, and put it right in the center. And just create a little mask. In fact, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna make it even smaller. Boop. Okay. Now what this mask is gonna do is gonna start there. 
So in our mask settings, you can open this up, hit mask path, set a keyframe. And then over the course of a, of a second, I'm gonna hit uh, V for my uh, little arrow tool here. And I'm gonna select the top most uh, part of my animation and move it up. I may even pinch in the sides a little bit. And um, the mask path will animate between those. Okay, we're also gonna highlight that keyframe. We're gonna drag it down. I'm gonna hold shift so it snaps to zero and make it ease up. Okay, so what does this do? Why, why are we building this little thing? Well, these are our little light glows, okay? And we're gonna build a bunch of them. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're going to pre-comp this and then duplicate it over and over again and use it over and over again. And so here's how easy that is. While you have this solid selected, you wanna hit Shift Command C. Shift Command C on your keyboard. It's gonna bring up this pre-compose menu. And you want to, you can just call it like, you know, glow spike. I don't know. That sounds good. And you wanna move all attributes into the new composition, okay? And this will make that little glow spike its own little, little animation. So now what we could do is just duplicate that glow spike, hit W on your keyboard, which is gonna bring up your rotate tool, and you can rotate this around, hit S for scale, and what you're creating is just a little bit of like a little uh, little Futurama, like, and you'll see. You'll see, it'll come together, I promise. Hit uh, duplicate, hit uh, R for, ro uh, I'm sorry, W for rotation, and S for scale, Maybe there's a big one over here, and you're you're in um you know you're in um like painting mode at this point. You're just kind of like creating a little world here, you know, a happy little glow. And S for scale, and let's let's call that a good one. And here's what's cool: you can take all these, Shift Command C, pre-compose again. Call this super glow stick, okay? And now all this animation is in one. Whoop, Whoop, it's called a whoop. You put this behind your main 3D uh, logo here and you turn uh, off the soloing and uh, we're done. No, that's uh, that looks awful. You um you now can uh, comp like blend this into the background. So one thing we wanna do is come over to our mode and say, I want to screen this into the background. You can turn the opacity down and we're also gonna blur it. So come over here to your uh, ramp and uh, or over here to your effects and presets and instead of ramp, you want, uh, let's call this box blur, okay? Fast box blur is great, it's fast, it's boxy, it's right in the name. Go to glow radius and set it to like two, I don't know, maybe four. Okay, and now, now we're getting somewhere. So here's our, here's our glow, here's our, um, Animation, it's gonna start way late. And the way I did that is I, I just took our super glow stick and I moved it. And I said, not till two seconds do I want this little thing to start, okay? Maybe the, uh, the opacity's still a little bit too high. We can go to like 18. It's a really subtle effect. And I think I'm gonna hit W for rotate and rotate it a little bit more because I don't want it, I don't want that one like centered right in the middle. I don't think that's very realistic. So if you ever are clicking around and anything ever happens like this, where all of a sudden you're in this uh, weird comp, you're like, how did I get here? Well, you can always go back to the original uh, in this little menu here and just go, uh, can you get me back to where I was? And you can dial around here. You could also go to your uh, project and just click on the one that you want. And in this case, we want two, which is our main comp. Okay, so now that we have our super glow stick, we could duplicate this, rotate this, okay? And offset this so the animation is different and move the transparency down. And these are really little subtle effects, okay? These little glow stick things are just gonna kind of fill in the back after we get this glow, kind of, you know, feeling the glow back there. And then these things will pop out. Maybe I'll move them up a little bit further too. Okay, boom, boom, let's move them up. Uh, but that that's not enough, right? You can't rely on some silly glow sticks to, to, to like get, get through this. What you really want is this like hotspot burst that is like, like 
so bright that the, that it almost goes to white, like the camera can't barely even handle it. So how do you how do we make that? Well, let's make a new composition, and we'll set it to our original settings, which was 1920 by 800, and we're gonna make a little glow effect here. Um, now you can go to New Layer Solid, uh, and if you happen to have Trap Code Shine, this is a perfect use case for it. But we're gonna do all this with built-in plugins here, um, and we're going to make a white background. Okay, so white solid, comp size, boom. Mask tool, I'm gonna to speed up a little bit because we've done this before. Mask tool, make a circle. Go to your effects and presets and go to, is it gradient, is it fra fractal? F-R-A-C-T-A, fractal noise, okay? I want you to drag that on top of your new white solid. And here's what we're trying to build. We're trying to build a little spec Little little place for light to dance off of. The way we do that is to pump up our contrast and dim down our brightness. And you can uh, also animate it uh, if you really want it to kind of shine. I don't think we'll have to do that quite quite uh, yet, but you can see what we have is this little piece of noise. That's all it is. It's a little contrasty uh, piece of noise that has little spots in it. And then we're going to go to uh, effects and presets and say light um, to, let's see, it's called something to, there it is, light burst, light burst. Okay. And now here's the real secret. Don't put it on the solid. I want you to make a new adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer, bam, put a light burst on it and turn up the intensity. Turn up the ray length and see what we have. Check it out. We have a little glow. Okay, now here's what's great. We can um, we can adjust the intensity. In other words, we can like animate the intensity if we want, or we could just like get it to where we want and then fade it in over time. So let's try it. Let's try both. I'm gonna dial this in until it's a little spot with big light rays coming out of it. Ray length, there we go. And now, now we add it into our comp. So let's call this uh, light burst. Let's go to comp two just by clicking on it over here. Let's grab our light burst and put it behind our 3D logo. Okay. And ah, man, that's just not enough. Let's go ahead and uh, screen it onto the background. And we need, we need more. We need more. So go into your light burst. This is great. You can go into your adjustment layer and go up to your effects controls, turn up intensity, and just keep going back to that comp until you have it really, really glowing. And in fact, you could cheat a little and have a, a duplicate of it in front to add a little bit of blur and glow. We're going to add that over time as well. And I think we can go pretty far with this effect. Okay. Light burst. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and, and animate it. Okay, so we're gonna say uh, intensity at at zero. We're gonna hit U for keyframes. To, this will show all keyframes. We're gonna drag that intensity over. And, and so this is where we're heading. And now we could turn it down and say over time, this is where we're gonna get to. Okay, so boom, let's go down. And over time, it's gonna get brighter. Totally fine. Let's go back into our comp. And we don't, what we don't want it to be is on there the whole time. We want it to ramp in. So we're going to start it later in the scene. Maybe, maybe back here. And I'm just dragging the comp. And it's not going to start until it, it, it's on that part of the timeline. Okay. I can uh, say T for transparency. Set a keyframe. And again, I set a keyframe for where it is. So I'm going to drag that later. And now set a keyframe for zero. Uh, maybe even less than that. And then over time, it's gonna, it's gonna glow. Okay, so now what we have is everything happening all kind of all at once. We have, we have the gist of what needs to happen, but it's all happening kind of like, oh gosh, I don't know. It's a little too um, fast. And I think we could get to the point a little faster too. We could speed up our camera move and all that stuff. But what we're really gonna do is, is, um, space out our keyframes, 
so that our, our glows and all that stuff are happening a little bit slower, a little bit later. Okay, so now it dims down. So now we, we get to this point where the background is, is nice and, and bright. Okay, I think we could brighten our background up a little bit. I think our orange glow can start to happen a little earlier. Okay, and then we have that extra bright glow that is nice, but it's a little bit too um, harsh. Okay, so let's take our light burst and scale it. Let's, let's scale it up actually a little bit. It is coming in over time. Let's hit U on the keyboard so we could see our opacity that is ramping up. But really, we need to get to our zoom. Our camera zoom is just is is taking too long. Okay, so we can come in here and just move our camera up, and say we want we want this camera to zoom in quicker. And so now we're going to get to the point where we have our our glows, and then it slams forward toward the camera. Okay, so how do we how do we ease through all this? Well, first of all, all these linear keyframes can be eased, and um, you know, there's more artful ways to do this, but one way to do it is to go to your keyframe assistant and say easy ease. And this will just smooth all those all those keyframes in. And now what we're really missing is is like the light that it that needs to like brighten the whole scene. So let's go add another solid. I know there's a ton of solids here, but I do love me a, a, a solid. Uh, so um, make it, I don't know, let's go with like a bright yellowish, uh, you know, color here. This is going to glow our entire scene. I'm going to take, put it all the way on top and I'm going to screen it. Okay. And I'm going to set a keyframe for opacity way at the end, like right as, as it hits our camera, this is kind of our fade out that basically it would like cut into the movie right there. And then right here, right as it starts to come toward the camera, I can animate it from zero. So now here's what we have right now. That orange glow from the top needs to animate on. You see, we added that compositing on the top and we need to animate that on as well. Keyframe for uh, eventual 30% right around here. But we want it to start here. I'm just gonna slam that to zero. Do another test. Where are we, where are we sitting right now? You know, it's getting long. You know, there's, this one's getting long, but there's a lot of little details in here that we want to get right. And so now the glow is happening, the slam up is happening. I want that glow in the background to be even brighter as, as soon as it starts to slam. And also, you know, we could add little 3D elements in the back to make it look like it's 3D. Um, but really what I wanna do is come back to our comp and I want to make our camera go into the logo. And we're gonna cheat it a little bit. We're gonna say right here, I'm gonna go down to our logo Go to P for position, set a keyframe for position. I don't, I want it to be right when it starts to zoom in. And then as we get towards uh, toward the logo, I'm gonna go to our Y and move our logo up. So the logo is hitting the camera instead of, um, instead of going, instead of the camera going above the logo. I'm also gonna go to keyframe assistant, say easy ease. And you know we may have to tweak all that a little bit, but now watch what happens. Now the the logo comes at us, and we we basically get to here. And by then we're into our next. By then we're into our next scene. And in fact, that's going up too quickly. We can come back, and we basically just want to match these two keyframes. Okay, whatever one is doing, we want the other one to do. So in this case, we're gonna select that first one and crank up that uh, ease so that it doesn't go up so quickly. Yeah, much, much more natural here. Let's watch it. Perfect. Perfect. Is it perfect here? All right, I think we're getting close. We need one more bright white glow in the background to really blow out this logo and, and make it so exciting that all this is happening. We're gonna do that and we're gonna add uh, one more or two more layers of, of adjustment layers on top to clean it all up. And I think we're getting close. Layer, new, solid. Let's go bright white. And let's go uh, move this below our logo burst, below our orange, and let's just create a little, little mask. 
feather the mask, go to add, and uh, actually we're gonna put this right above, right below our 3D text. That's what we want. Feather it out, okay? This is the light burst that the world has been waiting for for this for this um, for this specific animation. Uh, I think we can also brighten up. Um, well, we'll get to that in a second. But watch what this back glow is going to do as as the camera comes back. We're going to crank up the brightness of this white, and let's go to T for transparency. And let's set an opacity. Let's set it a little bit later and let's ramp into it. Okay. So now let's see what we have. You can see the 3D renders very quickly because it's already in another composition. And so now we have some pretty good timing here. I think there's a little, a little bit more I would want to do, but I would say overall, you know, maybe it's just a scaling up of that white that really needs to like add a little bit more um, sense of, 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 of like motion to that background. Yeah, dude, there you go. Foom. Okay, so that's pretty close. Um, that bright white might be able to be toned down a little bit. Uh, Shift Command Y, if you're on a solid layer, um, allows you to just quickly change the color. You could also use a fill um, uh, plugin, uh, and, but let's just do that so it's not pure white. It's got a, at least a little bit of color to it. And uh, I think we're getting pretty close. Okay, so let's go to our, like, our, our uh, what we should call like our, our pretty frame here, okay? And let's dial in the color correction to make this ultra readable, ultra beautiful. Let's go to layer new adjustment layer and let's go to curves. If you use curves, you know the power of curves. If you don't use curves, start using curves. It is um, the most powerful uh, color correction tool um, when you need a, you know, a quick fix, a, a little bit of punch to your scene. And, and in this case, I just added a little bit of S curve and you can see we went from this, which is a little washed out, to this, and all of a sudden everything's a little bit more vibrant. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna brighten up things that are a little dark right now. In fact, in general, I think we could add a little bit more front light. Eh, let's let's not mess too much with the front light, but let's go back to our front light, A A, and we have a little keyframe set for 13. I'm just gonna brighten that up. I think, I think we can get away with a little bit more detail in the front of our text. Okay, so let's go to our pretty frame again. Looking better, looking better. All right, without curves, with curves. All right, now let's do one more adjustment layer. I'm gonna duplicate our adjustment layer, go down to the one below it, remove our curves, and, and we're gonna go back to that fast box blur. And this fast box blur is gonna blur everything. We're gonna re repeat edge pixels. We're not gonna blur it that much, something more like 10 pixels maybe, or 10 radius. We're gonna set this to screen, and this is gonna give us a light wrap. This is gonna take all the colors from the back and bend it around the edge of our type. In fact, maybe it's even less, like seven. And check it out, see the edge of our type? Let's go to full res. We're getting toward the end, let's go to full res. And you're gonna see around the edge of our type now has this nice little light leak. This is without it, okay? This is with it. <laughs> now it's a little bright. We could hit T for transparency, go to our opacity and set it to like 50%. But now check the difference. We got this versus this. In fact, those two adjustment layers just took our scene from here to here, okay? Now uh, we can check our composition anywhere within all this. That's a little flat. Maybe I'll darken the side lights for that part of it. But by the time we get here, it's starting to look really good. As we go through, we can just kind of check little frames. You can see it's taking a little bit longer to render now that we're at full resolution. And oh, that's a pre that's pretty. Feeling good about that. Now, um, sometimes you might get this little hot spot. 
with 32-bit color, if you're using non-32-bit plugins, some other things can happen where this, where this goes down. So let me show you where this is. This is in our box blur. You can use other um, modes like add, and then you may have to turn it down a little bit, but sometimes screen does not work with 32-bit. It goes a little bonkers, especially with, with different plugins. So if that ever happens, you can just turn it down. And now instead, well, let's go a little bit more. See those light leaks happening right there? Man, I love that. So that's feeling good. It's gonna bash it up, up toward the camera. We'll do a hard cut to some action or whatever. And we are we are looking pretty close. One last thing we'll do is add a little bit of motion blur on our type and then uh, I think we're gonna call it on today. Like almost any animation, you could just keep going and going and going. And in this case, we're just gonna use a quick radial blur to fake some motion blur. And uh, so let's just use radial fast blur. Let's drag this onto our 3D comp. And you can see as we crank this up, the amount, it, it looks like it's just like a, some motion blur going toward the camera. And that's all we're trying to fake because rather than worry about true motion blur and the render hit, we just want a little fake as it slams toward the camera. So let's back up a little bit and we could turn it up over time as it starts coming toward the camera. So let's go ahead and set amount to zero and set uh, our, our amount there. And then as it goes toward the camera, we'll set that to, uh, I don't know, 50. And then we should get something a little bit more zoomy. So I'm gonna set this back to half res and we're gonna do a final little look at it. And like I said, there's always tweaks we could do. I think that first part, could be tweaked a little bit. This, you know, this is feeling good. And I, I want you to take this away too. If the final part, if this part really shines and really feels important, you can get away with a little bit of like, okay, let's just get to this point, okay? So, you know, it's a little bright right there. I might, you know, I might um, reduce the rear brightness a little bit right there. I think it's a little too, too bright. But man, I think I think I think that's pretty good um, for for how much time we put in here. Now, um, you know, I uh, I I encourage you to experiment at this point. Um, you know, try different logos, try different color schemes. You know, there's already there's already an Incredibles logo, and we we're using that in order to learn some techniques. And not, uh, you know, not worry as much about the design up front. But now that you have some ideas about a little bit of compositing, a little bit of glows, a little bit of lights, um, you know, what can you do with your logo, or your friend's logo, or, or something interesting that you that you can try? So really, really um, want you to experiment, play with this. And if you come up with something interesting, you know, please drop it below in the comments. Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget you can download the scene file from today's tutorial over at our website. We're gonna link it up down below and here on YouTube as well. Now with that, I hope to see you in another tutorial really soon. We have plenty more After Effects and of course Cinema 4D and other 3D tools. Uh, tons of tutorials coming out over the next few months. So if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, now'd be a good time as well. All right, with that, thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, quick question for you guys. If you've seen Incredibles 2, put it down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of it, and let me know if I should watch it. Worth it? Should I go to the theater? Should I see it at home? Wait for it? Better not watch it? Maybe it's not as good? Uh, too many options? Just let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.